Further debate. I recognize the member for Guelph. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I want to begin my remarks today by saying that I support having us sit this summer so that we can focus on combating the virus and so we can focus on how we can safely reopen our economy and recover from this crisis. And I know that all members from every party in this House have been working incredibly long hours, meeting with our constituents, helping our constituents, and listening to their concerns. And we all want to come back here this summer and bring their concerns to this legislature so we can act. And while I have some concerns with the original motion, uh, the amendment that the member from London West brought forward addresses many of those concerns, but I'll also suggest to my opposition colleagues that I believe that we could have addressed a lot of these concerns if we would all just engage together in good faith negotiations. And when I say that, I say that as every member of this House, myself included. We can all do better to rise to this occasion. I've been so proud of the way this House has conducted itself over the last two months. People have set aside partisanship. I call it quarantining partisanship. We have done that. We haven't all agreed. We've met four times in extraordinary sittings to pass bills and even a mini budget through unanimous consent. It's extraordinary that we've been able to do that, but it makes sense given the extraordinary crisis that we're facing. And now, this week, I sadly see that unity slipping away. And it disappoints me, Speaker, because I think in this time of crisis, the people of Ontario expect us to work together. They expect us to be stronger together. That hashtag has meaning. It's not just a hashtag, it actually has meaning. And I believe it's our responsibility to live up to the expectations in which we were elected to live up to. Not to play petty political games with each other, but to actually do the people's work. Not just in words, but in actions. And we have made a difference. We have shown people we can do that. But what does it say to people? What does it say to people that while our public health leaders are scolding people for what happened at Trinity Bellwoods Park on Saturday, we saw what happened in this house this morning because we couldn't all agree on a unanimous consent motion. The people crammed in this house, we violated public health guidelines this morning because we couldn't agree on a unanimous consent motion. And Speaker, I don't want to play a blame game. I don't want to point fingers because we're all responsible for that. And I include myself in that. I've ratcheted up the partisanship over the last few days. I think we all have. And in some ways, it's probably inevitable. It is politics after all. We were all elected here with a different vision, with a different agenda, with the different policies that we wanted to support and fight for. And the people who voted for us expect us to fight for those policies with passion and commitment. But I believe we can do it and still figure out ways to work together. And so when we debate bills over the next few weeks, you know, instead of trying to navigate the private property rights of farmers with the constitutional rights of activists, why don't we talk about how our food system can be resilient in the face of the COVID crisis? Instead of talking about new ways of building transit, can we talk about how we can make sure our transit systems actually survive this crisis? And instead of playing political games, can we get this finance committee working with all members, with all members talking about ways in which we can bring forward legislation to debate in this House 
that helps us with the economic recovery. My gosh, people, think of the frontline workers putting their lives on the line to keep us safe and healthy. Think of the small business owners who are barely hanging on. Think of the people in long-term care whose the tragedy continues and we have to solve it. Think of the millions of Ontarians out of work. And then ask yourselves what they are asking of us. That we could maybe at least come up with a summer schedule together that works. And yes, I believe we should have PMBs. But maybe we can figure out a way to do that without this acrimonious debate. And so I'm asking members of the government, government house leaders specifically, who I will remind everyone has given the opposition more time to participate in debates and to hold the government accountable. And I'm asking the official opposition, and I'm asking the independents, I'm asking us all to come together and reach a compromise for the summer sitting, because the people of Ontario expect that of us. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further debate, the member for Chatham-Kent-Leamington.